Now there's something you don't see every day. Yeah, Michelle Obama just rammed her crotch right into the lens of the cameraman. I don't know if that was intentional or accidental. I mean, honestly, with these folks now, I, I can't tell which what their true intentions are anymore, besides completely ruining and destroying this country. And they're also expressing signs of being afraid scared. Listen to this. This is um, from Barack Obama's former campaign manager talking to Jen Psaki and telling her that he's scared over the early voting numbers and the turnout. Okay. And he's that's because early voting has been overwhelmingly in favor of President Trump. Okay. What's their biggest concern right now if you're the Harris team? Well, look, I think it's a couple things. The early vote numbers are a little scary, and you and I have been texting back and forth. Um, Republicans didn't do what they did last time. Last time, Trump said, don't early vote, and so they didn't. Republicans do have an advantage in early vote numbers. When the early vote come in, it's going to look a little bit different than 2020, and that's scary. So basically, as you can see here, Laura Loomer says Trump's going to win. Get out and vote. He's even got huge support from the Jewish community. And you guys can see here. I'll show it to you. Yeah. Wow. Obama, speaking of Obama's, issued a message saying no Jews should vote for Trump. So New York Jews filled the streets blasting a Yiddish song that says vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> but, you know, actions speak louder than words. Barack Obama telling Jewish people not to vote for Trump is a little bit different than Kamala Harris showing Jewish people why they should vote for Donald Trump and not for Kamala Harris. Trump said it while he was sitting down with Benjamin Netanyahu at his home in Mar-a-Lago. And he goes, I just don't know how any Jewish person could vote for Kamala Harris. So maybe we'll see a situation where it's like the opposite is flipped in reverse. Now, granted, we know that Doug, I mean, he's a huge cuck, so there's no way he would do it. But maybe there's a chance Doug Imhoff votes for Donald Trump and he just doesn't tell his wife. You, you know how the Democrats, they don't want you to talk to your spouse. Keep keep who you're voting for a secret from your significant other. But by God, you ask Kamala Harris what she voted for and who she voted for. She just flat out won't tell you. How did you vote on Prop 36? So I have my ballot is on its way to California and I'm going to trust the system that it will arrive there. Um, and I am not going to talk about the vote on that because I, honestly, it's the Sunday before the election and I don't intend to create a, an endorsement one way or another around it. So but I did vote. Yeah. And Taylor Swift, she was on the list of celebrities that said that she would, I think she was on the list of celebrities that said that she would flee the country. She would leave the United States if President Trump wins. As we mentioned, it's the final night of Taylor Swift's Eras Tour in Indy. Swift wrapping up the U.S. leg of her record-breaking tour right here in Indianapolis. Well, she's saying bye-bye. wrapping up her heiress tour in Indianapolis and leaving America, leaving the United States for, I guess, for good. I don't know, for the foreseeable future. You know, anything is possible. This pair, Taylor and her boyfriend, Travis Kelsey, are the epitomes of elite snobs. She doesn't care what happens to these kids, just like he doesn't give a shit what happens to all the young men who take that Pfizer booster he's been pushing. I'm sure he's totally fucking clueless about the myocarditis taking the lives of young men in this country who didn't need the shot to begin with, never mind a booster. Where's he going to be when these boys wind up with heart scarring that causes heart attacks? 
and potentially death. They will be sitting in their mansions in Rhode Island and California and New York and jetting across the world saying, let them eat cake because they'll be bathing themselves in their own sanctimony, too obsessed with their money and their concerts and their football games to have a thought for those they've hurt. And don't forget, while they're jet setting around the world in their private jets, burning up fuel and emitting ton, metric tons of CO2 into the atmosphere, they'll also be lecturing and preaching and basically scolding everybody else to take care of the planet. You know, got to worry about climate change. But yeah, I forgot about that Pfizer booster that uh, was a paid promotion and sponsor of Travis Kelsey. But I did see this today. This came from the White House and it says, whitehouse.gov, we are intent on not letting Omicron disrupt work and school for the vaccinated. You've done the right thing and we will get through this. That sounds pretty encouraging from the White House, right? But wait, there's more. For the unvaccinated, you're looking at a winter of severe illness and death for yourselves and your families and the hospitals you may soon overwhelm. Dun, dun, dun. Actually, I'm going to fix that in post. I'm going to say I'm going to put it in black and white, make it seem like a Harrison Ford advert, make it seem like a, a Harrison Ford advertisement. You're looking at a winter of severe illness and death for yourselves and your families and the hospitals you may soon overwhelm. Dun, dun, dun. Somber and chilling. You should be afraid. You should be very afraid. And while we're on the topic of Kelsey, check this one out. This is a wild scene at Penn State. Hey, Kelsey! Kelsey! <laughs> Would you get into a fight with Travis Kelsey's brother as he's holding a, a case of garage beer? <laughs> so uh, Jason Kelsey just attacked this this maybe college student at Penn State after he asks him, how does it feel that your brother's a f for dating Taylor Swift? And then Jason Kelsey slams the kid's phone on the ground. And uh, he then asks, who's the now? That sounds like a tough talk that Diddy would give you like right after he shoved a dildo in your ass and squirted baby oil, oil, baby oil all over you. It's a tongue twister. Speaking of Diddy, here are some of the kids at the heiress tour. Swifties are still in their indie era here in Swift City on night three, filling downtown streets and businesses with glitter, bracelets, and excitement. From a scale to one to ten, I'm ten on excitement. I'm super duper excited. I cannot wait, and I can't believe I'm not actually going to get to see Taylor Swift. I'm really excited. Oh, I'm really excited. Super excited. I love her. I'm so excited that it can make me cry. The weekend that tens of thousands of Taylor Swift fans have been waiting for is coming to a close. It brought some, like Isabella, here from as far away as California. So... I actually saw a video today and it was kind of funny because it was Kurt Cobain and he was in like amazement when he found out that Madonna was charging $50 for concert tickets back in 1993. Ticket prices, basically. Ah, oh, like we had that discussion. Ticket yeah, prices. Yeah. First question is what do, what do you think of artists who do charge anywhere between 50 to $75 for tickets? There are people who charges charge that, that much, much money? Who does Apparently. that? Madonna. Like, Madonna How much does? do we charge a ticket, John? Yeah, but that's like a burlesque show. It's a big production. Twenty-seven. Twelve. Uh, you can speak. Three? Is that twelve or twenty-one? Seventeen to eighteen bucks a ticket. Wow. Madonna charges fifty dollars. Apparently. Fifty to seventy-five. Madonna yeah. wears Madonna wears fur too. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. We were talking about, boy, we should charge $25 and really milk it. Yeah, <laughs> really take them for all they got. Fast forward to 2024, and I have no idea how much Taylor Swift heiress tickets cost, but I'm sure they're high as giraffe booty. Expensive as hell. Not even taking into consideration the Biden tax or the Harris tax, Kamalanomics and inflation. So when I see these kids here, 
traveling all the way from California, spending money on Taylor Swift tickets. Man, their parents must be freaking rich. What do you think of Indianapolis so far? It's been very magical and wonderful. The hotels are really expensive and it was pretty pricey, but we made it work. Can you imagine somebody saying, yeah, you know, it was really expensive, it was really pricey, but we made it work. We maxed out our credit cards and we took out a second mortgage. We foregoed eating and we're actually sleeping in a tent across the street, but Taylor Swift, right? YOLO. I mean, I just got back from New York City and it's like, Indy is starting to look like New York City this weekend. I've never seen so many people here. The March Madness. Yo, I remember when Lizzo said that Kamala Harris would make the rest of the country look like Detroit. How pissed would you be if somebody said your city now looks like New York City? Granted, I know she meant because of the amount of people there, but if it really looked like New York City, I'd have to move. Though not everyone was lucky enough to score a ticket, they all told us they still felt like they were part of a family. Even though we're not going to the show, it's been almost a similar experience just being around everyone with like, like-minded. Yes. I'm not going because like I didn't get tickets, but I'm just like enjoying it. Translation, uh, my parents aren't rich, so I have to live vicariously through everybody else and just kind of just breathe in the Taylor Swift air from the outside. I mean, it, it's kind of impressive when you think about it. I mean, who else could draw a crowd of people to attend even if they couldn't get inside? Oh, yeah. Donald Trump. Every rally he's ever held, ever. That's far enough! Rather an interesting development, sir. My general says there is no point in continuing this fighting. He is willing to discuss a surrender. Tell him to go to hell. Sorry! What? Was there anything else? <laughs> I don't know where Benny Johnson comes up with these video um, uh, comedic parody intros, but they're always spot on and right on time. Uh, here we go. Kamala Harris has given up in North Carolina. This is an all-important swing state that uh, requires uh, is a is a requirement for Kamala Harris's uh, victory on Tuesday, and she has now pulled millions of dollars of advertising and funding and staffing from that state, along with Nevada. Now, this is this is huge. This is really important. And if you want to get caught up to speed on this one, just watch the video right before this, because I talked all about it. OK, I brought you all the details. so You'd understand what Benny Johnson's talking about, what Kamala's going through, why she's pulling out of North Carolina, which is very, very telling. You know, after Hurricane Helene, it makes perfect sense. But the fact that she needs North Carolina so bad, but it's also basically said she's giving up and surrenders in North Carolina tells you a lot. On top of seeing Taylor Swift flee the country. Remember, she said, if Trump wins, she's out of here. Little birdies are beginning to tell me we have um, we have employees in Nevada. We have we are very well sourced in Nevada. Some people who um, are, are working and running uh, the Nevada Republican Party and the turnout efforts there have been nonstop texting us about the numbers. The early vote numbers are catastrophic for Kamala Harris in Nevada. So the beauty, the gift and the curse here with Nevada is Nevada may not even matter come, you know, the end of election night on the East Coast because Nevada is three hours behind. It may not even matter. It really, it really may not. Republicans are up by 40,000 votes in Nevada. Kamala Harris has withdrawn money now, surrendering effectively North Carolina and and Nevada, although this hasn't been printed yet. So watch for that news cycle as we are often ahead of the news cycle on this program. Yeah. And uh, yesterday I shared with you some internal conversations that they're having behind closed doors of essentially preparing Kamala Harris for a devastating loss. Kamala Harris ladies and gentlemen, is beginning to narrow severely her potential chance to win this election. 
by not only giving up in swing, what is considered a swing state, as many people said, North Carolina is not a swing state, as Rich Barrett said yesterday, but by moving those and allocating those resources to Virginia. This is how bad things have gotten. Things have gotten really, really bad. And Donald Trump Jr., he was on Fox and Friends yesterday, and he said that over the next three days, I think it was three days, so it was Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday, that Donald Trump had seven rallies. I mean, we've dealt with this from day one, but you know, it, honestly, my father's stamina right now is unmatched. I've never seen anything like it. I've never been more proud as a son. I mean, in the next 36 hours, I just want to preview, in the next 36 hours, he has seven events. Think about that. It starts, you know, obviously today in Pennsylvania, then he goes to North Carolina, then he goes to Georgia. I'm with him all day tomorrow. North Carolina, Pennsylvania, he's going to be in Reading, then he's going to be in Pittsburgh. And then as he has the last two times, he's going to end up in, in Grand Rapids. But I mean, think about seven, seven massive rallies in front of 40, 50, 60,000 people. I mean, so these rallies are drawing massive crowds, but seven rallies in, in effectively 36 hours. And I think that's the stamina that Americans want, right? I mean, that, that's the energy that Americans want out of our commander in chief. And it's exactly what the current administration doesn't have. It's exactly what Kamala hasn't had this entire campaign trail. And I've never been more proud of that man right there. I mean, the guy is working tirelessly. The guy just never stops. And he wants to save this country. He wants to save the greatest nation on earth. I think it was seven rallies, seven events or more, right? In three days. Whereas Kamala is pulling ad advertising dollars out of North Carolina. And she herself had one. She only had one over three days. Kamala Harris is allegedly reallocating the resources to the state of Virginia saying that we, you may well, you may well see President Trump not just run the table with the swing states, the seven swing states, but start picking off Democrat states that have been consistently voting Democrat for decades. And I wonder if this has anything to do with the amount and availability of funds, because maybe things have gotten a little out of hand with how much Kamala Harris and Democrats and Barack Obama have been paying off these celebrities like J-Lo and Cardi B and Lizzo and Harrison Ford and Beyonce and Usher and who else was it? But anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. They might have they might have broke the bank. We know they're not really good with managing money and handling a budget. They're really good with sending money, just spending it and sending it out left and right. But they're not good with keeping up with it. Virginia, New Mexico, Minnesota, North Carolina. Oh, yeah, baby. Check this out. Miami Dade early voting. Republicans are making history. You remember uh, Miami Dade in Florida here in this state. This is, of course, the uh, liberal county around Miami and the greater overall Miami area. These are air, these are neighborhoods that are Haitian and Cuban, Honduran. There's an entire like little Argentina, right? That's there in Miami. Miami is very much by by definition a melting pot city. Uh, much like New York. I think the whole identity politics game is over. You know, we, we're reaching a new level of normal, and that normalcy is of people waking up and realizing that, yeah, I don't care, like Tim Walls. Tim Walls tries to, the best he's got is criticizing Donald Trump's lock screen on his iPhone. Donald's not thinking about you at all. I, I mentioned this the other day, you know on your phone you got the lock screen? You got your kids, you got your grandkids, you got your dog, you got your car, if you're some of us, you got it on there. <laughs> Donald's got a picture of himself on his phone. That's a true story. True story. Can we agree that is weird behavior there? That is weird behavior. <laughs> yeah, I think people are more concerned with their ability to be able to afford groceries or not be attacked in some war or have to be deployed to fight in a war, be able to afford a home or even pay rent, have a job, not worry about their kids going to school, a little boy and coming home, a little girl being forced to inject strange substances by big pharma into their bodies or else. I think that they're more concerned about that than the joy and the hope and the opportunity and the free concerts and all the bullshit 
that the Democrats and left have been running on since they stabbed Joe Biden in the back. Right. So it's a landing spot for so many people who immigrate to this nation. And it's flipped red. Republicans surge ahead in Miami-Dade early voting. The only chance for Democrats is not on election day, but it's in these early votes. I mean, we've all heard the stories about the early voting disasters trying to prevent people from voting for Donald Trump. Can you name me one instance that we've seen and heard of of an early voting problem affecting Democrats, preventing them from voting for Kamala Harris and Tim Walz? The answer is no, because it doesn't exist. From the standpoint of the Democrats aren't introducing ways to make it difficult for Democrats to vote for them, while also at the same time, there aren't that many folks that want to vote for them. These early votes are now turning catastrophic. Here's what the state of North Carolina looks like. Holy smokes, man. In the early vote. In the early vote. Hey, hit that thumbs up. Hit that like button if you've been here before and you heard me say the numbers don't lie. These are the numbers. They don't lie. The chances uh, the chances in North Carolina is uh, now effectively slipping away entirely. And expect this now to be something that permeates uh, like a cancer the entire Harris campaign. Because as you begin, as you begin to see the erosion, as you begin to notice the erosion in one swing state, you'll begin to see the contagion to other swing states as the headlines begin to depress and demoralize. Depressing and demoralizing Kamala Harris herself, by the way, who was asked just moments ago on CBS, the race is slipping away from you. Look at Kamala's response. It's, it's perfect. The response of a loser. Watch. No, he's absolutely right. Kamala, for sure, is a loser in every sense of the word. But it's very, very interesting to see when her friends, this, these friendly spaces that she likes to go to, her friends tell her the truth that she's losing, that the race is slipping away. And before I play this, I do want to remind you guys that Kamala Harris said she didn't have time in her schedule to go on the Joe Rogan podcast. She didn't have time on her schedule to go on the Joe Rogan podcast because it's not a friendly space. I don't think it's a an unfriendly space. It's just an unknown territory that she can't control. Her handlers can't control. So she didn't have time for that. But she had time to go on every other dog shit podcast there was out there and show up on SNL when she legally really wasn't supposed to. OK, but they got that worked out because. Because of that appearance, now Donald Trump gets a 60-second spot on NBC during, uh, I think it was during NASCAR. Hello to our great sports fans, and I hope you're having a fantastic time. We're two days away from the most important election in the history of our country. We've got to save our country, and it needs saving. It's in very bad shape. The worst economic numbers in generations were just announced two days ago. We're losing jobs, we're losing everything, including viability. We're gonna end up in a depression based on what's been happening. We've never seen anything like it, at least for the last 40 years. We have to straighten out our country, we have to close our borders, we have to lower our taxes, we have to get rid of inflation, and we're going to do it. Just remember, Kamala and her friends broke it. I'll fix it. Most important election in the history of our country. Go and vote. So, you know, eye for an eye, right? But she didn't have time for Joe Rogan, but she did have time for SNL. She doesn't have time to rally in these la the last leg red zone. Hey, Coach, Coach Tim, Coach Walls, where you at? Why aren't you telling your star player here that, you know, it's his crunch time. We're in, we're in the red zone. She needs to get out on the field and play. She doesn't have time for that. She's pulling money out of North Carolina. She's redirecting it to Virginia. She's admitting defeat, yet she'll stand there and tell you that she'll do everything within her power to free hostages in Hamas, yet she won't do everything in her power to win this election. Just saying.
It does suggest that your momentum has slowed. Do you feel like the race is slipping away? I do not. And actually, and I agree with you. I think certainly polling is a measure, but to be frank, if I listened to polls, I would have never run for my first or second office. <laughs> I wouldn't be here talking with you. And um, what I am seeing are in, in states such as South Carolina, I mean, North Carolina, Georgia, historic turnout historic turnout. And if I'm being frank with you and I listen to polls, I wouldn't be sitting here right now running for president because there were no polls because I was just inserted. I was just selected and chosen because of the coup that we executed on Joe Biden. So don't forget that. Historic turnout for Trump. You ding bat. For Trump. So the race is slipping away from you. So you're losing. So CBS. And Kamala goes, actually, there's historic turnout in North Carolina. Yeah, this is what the historic turnout looks like. (laughs) I think Kamala, as she's done over and over again, she doesn't necessarily really speak direct. She's not direct. She's very indirect in how she creates this word salad. So when you ask her if she's noticed that the race has slipped away and she says no, she's probably saying, no, the race hasn't slipped away. It's always been gone. Like, it's never been even close. So it it didn't have an opportunity to slip away. Historic turnout for President Trump. And we're seeing that actually all across. Who will win North Carolina? Prediction in the uh, 70 to 30 in the betting markets. I'm not betting. I'm not putting money on this one. If only Kamala Harris could hit the road and convince people and drum up her base. Because what this is going to do, again, is going to cause a cancerous contagion throughout her campaign. As people, and they're already talking to the press, talk about how having a losing campaign. It's hard to really describe like the, the, the palette of a losing campaign, but you know it when you see it. If you were close to like the Mitt Romney team, like they knew they were going to lose. Like Jimmy Carter, 1980, like you knew they was going to lose. It was something that permeates the campaign. It's an attitude. It's a macabre, morass, like dark cloud that hangs over the campaign. Now, Benny's right because... I don't know about you guys, but you can just feel it, right? Like you, you see it, you feel it, even from gay. And this, you got to think back then when folks knew that it was over, they didn't have the metrics that we have today. Like early voting is cool, but seeing turnout at rallies, seeing views and engagement on podcasts and just casual conversations on X spaces, it says a lot, okay? And we have so much greater ability now to connect, to see things in real time, and to see what's actually happening versus what the media wants to present to you and spin their way to paint a picture for their narrative like CNN would love to do, ABC, CBS, MSNBC would love to do, and even Fox. Donald Trump ripped Fox. He ripped them yesterday, I think. Yeah, here it is. And he said... Fox News keeps putting out Democrat ads as part of their news program. Their sound bites are almost all of Harris and her Democrat friends, all of whom are on the shows. Fox News is not our friend. It's crazy. But we don't need them because we have each other, really. It's crazy if you think about it. And I'm not in a place where we would see a lot of political activity outside of uh, maybe a small boat parade. And I don't want to say it's biased. I just think it's truly the direction that the country is going and what people want. So I think even if you went to like the most blue of corners of this country, you would still see a huge MAGA presence, right? And when you do see a Harris Walls presence, you know what it is? It's typically those outraged, irate lefties losing it, ripping signs out of the ground, ripping, trying to take signs off, like just absolutely insane. I have yet to see MAGA behave in a way that Kamala Harris and Tim Walls and Democrats ignite, just light this fire and inspire their 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 supporters to go out and start problems and create, you know, the opposite of joy. I thought her campaign was supposed to be joy. It doesn't seem like joy to me. This now is picking up great acceleration with Kamala Harris. So much so that Kamala Harris is barking during her campaign rallies at her supporters 
in nonsensical, in, in like, in totally nonsensical ways that don't make any sense. This is how shook this woman is. I don't want to get carried away with the clip, but I kind of wanted to insert a Family Guy clip here of Brian just losing it. And then immediately jumping and clinging to a teleprompter like it was a door of the Titanic as you let Jack slip off into the deep. Here we go. Listen to this. Okay. So it's fake, right? So they've been, the, so the audience has been directed to shout the name Kamala in order to try and trick people that they support her. When in fact, they probably just got a Chick-fil-A sandwich or a pack of cigarettes, got shoved onto a bus to like go here, got paid. We know there's n there's no shortage of paid activists for Kamala Harris. And we know that based on cell phone tracking, many of these people go to the same rallies. So it's the same person at the same rally in multiple different states. It's an operation. This is why these rallies aren't open to the public. They're closed. It's an operation to create an artificial support for Kamala Harris. It's also why you don't see an, a surplus and overflow of rally supporters outside the rally. So like Donald Trump, he had 20,000 at Madison Square Garden. I think he had like 75,000 outside, just outside. And this is not uncommon. You know why Kamala Harris never has that happen? It's not because there's not that much support. I mean, I guess it is. There isn't that much support, but it's because they don't employ a surplus to stand outside. So they know they have a head count. They're busting them in. They, they, it's, it's, I mean, it's a, it's an easy tell. And then they're, they're told like clapping seals to start chanting Kamala's name because they think it'll look good, but it backfires. Watch this. Okay. Now I want each of you to tell your own name. Do that. <laughs> Because it's about all of us. It's about all of us. And listen, I have fought my whole career to put the people first. That was so stupid. That was... <laughs> that, they were like, we, we didn't know we had to shout our own. I don't want people to know I'm really here. I don't... I mean, what if your name was just like, like a crazy-ass long name that was just like really hard to chant? What? <laughs> we give plenty of speeches, okay? I like to be particularly high energy in, our, in, in my speeches. I like, I like to interact with the crowd. I believe like, my, my thesis on this is that people are done with ha listening to people just talk at them. People like to interact. We love the chat. That's why the chat's on screen. The chat's rolling. We didn't do comments on screen during this uh, Trump event because there were mothers and widows there and everything like that. And we, we, we wanted to like, maybe, you know, take a, take a second, right. And, and let them speak. But we always, we, we're regularly putting the comments on screen. We love the chat. Big old out here to you, the chat. Okay. So yeah, the, the, the left, they like in the media, they like to say, Oh my God, I can't believe that Trump just stood there and listened to music for, you know, just stood on stage and just kind of swayed and danced to the music. Everybody wanted that. I think he actually asked if, they wanted to spend the last few minutes together just kind of just vibing out, just chilling versus Kamala coming on stage and trying to make this connection to obviously a crowd of people who have zero connection. And she says, shout your own name. Crickets. Um, when you're going to interact with the crowd, you better do something that doesn't like silence them and cause them to go awkwardly quiet like this. This looks bad. Unmute. Tell your own name, do that. <laughs> what? When everybody like is cheering for you and then they all just stop and go, what's wrong with you lady? Cause it's about all of us. It's about all of us. L L Kamala knows that she just bombed there and watch, watch her Mani like watch her manically like cling to and claw like literally take her fingernails and claw into the teleprompter like she was inside of some type of asylum right and she has a she has like a, a special bite stick or something that that like keeps her from going into a seizure like the, like the, the, she, she she's literally manically clawing at the words inside of the teleprompter to save her. Watch this. Listen, 
I have fought my whole career to put the people first. You can you can literally see her eyes ru like run to the look at that. That's the teleprompter eye line right there. She's not looking at the crowd. She's just jumping to the teleprompter. Where would the Democrats be? Where would Kamala Harris be without a teleprompter? I mean, shoot, we saw where Cardi B was without a teleprompter. They had to run up on stage and hand her a cell phone, a smartphone with her script on it. Just like Mark Cuban, he's standing on stage reading from a smartphone. And they're like, say these words, quit talking. And then he, he completely fucked that up. So they were like, dude, you're fired. Get out of here. We did the whole show. We've been live for two hours and 30 minutes. I don't have a script. We don't have a script. We have some clips that we play. I don't have a script. We have some stories we want to talk about, but we just, we just chat. We like have we talk with you. We tell you what we think. We tell you what the thoughts inside of our brain. Uh, admittedly, admittedly, we have a room temperature IQ, but at least we like use it. I'd be willing to bet that if you put Benny Johnson out in competition with Kamala Harris in a campaign. I'd be willing to bet that there, you know, there's actually still a lot of people in this country who don't know who Kamala Harris is. Benny Johnson proved that when he was out. I think he was in New York and he was asking people uh, Kamala or Trump. And some people didn't know who she was. So uh, I would think that, you know, Benny Johnson, Benny Johnson would probably be less known to the masses because he's not, you know, mainstream. Uh, you know, people may recognize David Muir, you know more so now after you know what he's done and some of these other big name news anchors and journalists but i'd be willing to bet that even with benny johnson's limited celebrity we'll say that's the best way to describe it maybe not being as well known i think that you put him on stage next to kamala and you'd get more people interested in voting for benny johnson than kamala harris just by speaking talking no script no teleprompter that's it. And we're, we're, we're happy to, we're happy to say it. We're happy to say, like, we speak and we tell you what we think. At the very least, you know, there's no lying around here because we actually don't have a script. We actually, and, and when we speak to large events, like we just spoke at a massive stadium in Georgia uh, at a Trump rally, um, we also don't have a script. We don't read off a script. We like work with the crowd, work with the audience because we actually do this all day. And we know how to interact with people. And you're not lying. It's hard to interact with people when you don't know. When it's, one, it's hard to keep up with the lies, okay? They keep compounding, especially lies that have been proven against you, Kamala, that you have yet to address on how you've flip-flopped and changed and your values have changed or haven't changed or whatever. But... When you don't know what the people want, when you know deep down inside in your heart, you actually don't care about the people and you actually want to make their lives worse and give them more of what they don't want. It makes it really hard to naturally and organically have these conversations with feeling the vibe of the crowd without a script. Also a crowd that you didn't buy and pay for. It, it's we're not bragging. It's like what 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 you should like the bare minimum. For if you're going to do this profession, you should be willing, you should be able to like interact with human beings and not be like this creep, like an AI would run for president better. Like one of those Tesla robots, one of those Tesla, Tesla robots, like running on like chat GPT would do a better job than Kamala Harris. Don't let that Tesla robot run on chat GPT, Benny. Mm -mm. Chat GPT can't be trusted. Now, Elon's Grok, that'd be a better choice and selection. But I also think that Elon's version of AI's chatbot would actually be honest. It wouldn't just tell you what it wants you to hear. It wouldn't just feed you rhetoric and propaganda. It would tell you the truth. It probably wouldn't do this. This is excruciating. You know what also is excruciating? Uh, the new clip out of ABC News. ABC News just announced that Donald Trump's going to win. ABC News just straight up said, you know what? I uh, Donald Trump has enough numbers in the swing states. Now it's Donald Trump's race to lose. Don't get complacent. Go vote. I'm going to go vote after work today in the studio. Go vote. But listen to this at ABC News. The seven states that are almost certainly going to determine the presidency, things close as ever, and we're seeing a very slight Trump edge in several of the battleground states. Kamala Harris's numbers have gone down just a little bit. 
Now this again, go vote, go vote for sure. This isn't, this isn't an end all be all, but fortunately, you know, and uh, what is it? An ounce, an ounce of preparation or something. I don't know what, I don't know what the saying is, but I feel as though Donald Trump, JD Vance, MAGA, Mike Johnson, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a plan here. Okay. We're not going to leave this to chances. This is just like hope and pray for the best, even though we know Donald Trump's winning, even though we're about to see Donald Trump win. We know that the left and the media, they're already running test results of Kamala Harris winning. Like we know that they will, they, they don't care. They'll get desperate and they will lie and they will cheat and they will attempt to steal. We can't give up. We have to, we have to play this entire game like we're losing until the buzzer, you know, and then even until after the buzzer. But I, I think that, uh, I think that there's going to be a huge surprise like Donald Trump said at Madison Square Garden that he'll let everybody know about after the election. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is super embarrassing. Oh no. Oh no, Danny. What? Look at this. Kamala rally. Look at the size of this teleprompter. Look at this. Look at the size of the prompter at this Kamala rally. Thank you, Alex Stein, for capturing this. Look at that thing. That is like the door of the Titanic. This is like, like this is like the door that Rose floated on when the Titanic sank. Look at the size of that thing. Look at that. And they have to, they have to, this was for Beyonce's mom. Beyonce's mom needed help introducing her daughters. This is the quality of the speakers at these events. And she doesn't know how to say Kamala. Kamala Harris. Look at that. <laughs> oh my God. They had to phonetically spell out Kamala Harris's name they wait, the way they wanted Beyonce's mom to read it. This is like Kamala Harris running for president 101. You remember when she first started you know, running this campaign after Joe Biden mysteriously dropped out uh, by way of an ex post that we know he doesn't control his ex account by way of an uploaded image of something, a, a document with no signature? Or did that one have a signature? I can't remember. But either way, that was 101 knowing how to say her name because they wanted to brainwash and indoctrinate everybody to believe that her name wasn't actually an Indian name. So instead of how it would be pronounced like the flower Kamala, they decided to change it to Kamala, which doesn't make any sense. It's not natural. It doesn't like you look at the word, the name, and you can say Kamala. No, they have to now Tell, they have to show people how to say her name. Oh, how excruciating. How embarrassing. How humiliating, in fact. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment. Um, ABC News is saying Kamala Harris is losing. Multiple people from the Trump campaign are saying Kamala Harris is losing. Here's Bruzewitz, Rick Grinnell, uh, multiple other people now like coming over the top and saying uh, Kamala's Pulling out of swing states. Okay. Kamala has given up on North Carolina. Soon to be Nevada. Mark my words. Put a pin in it. Soon to be Nevada. Ooh, baby. What a what a what a what a fascinating and wonderful and uh, exciting time to be alive. Yeah, you got that right. But it's not over, folks. It's not. It's not even close. So make sure you get out and vote. Do me a favor. Do everybody a favor. Share this video. Let's help get the word out. Big shout out to Benny Johnson. Thanks for providing such a, a great video for us to even discuss and react to and provide commentary on. And uh, yeah, guys, let's let's get it. MAGA 47. Fight, fight, fight. I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care. Bye.